So I'm out in Seattle right now for the Microsoft Build event, and today is day one. Tomorrow is still the big Microsoft Build event, but today they invited a bunch of media and content creators to see what they've been working on in the AI space. Probably the biggest announcement of the day was their new Copilot Plus PCs. These are AI first computers. These are computers that are designed to run the AI inference right directly on the computer. They have a CPU, a GPU, and an NPU, a neural processing unit, so that the AI inference can actually happen outside of the GPU and the CPU. So you can actually run AI programs while still playing video games and doing things that actually use up your GPU. And because they're building these computers with AI first, all of the AI is running locally on your computer. We've seen a lot of these devices come out lately, like the Rabbit and the Humane Pin, where they actually have to connect to the cloud. So when you ask it a question, it goes to the cloud, the large language model responds in the cloud, and then sends the response back. This leads to a huge delay in the amount of time between you asking the question and actually getting the response back. These new computers that Microsoft is building, because they're AI first and because the AI is actually running on the computer, you don't have that same delay where it sends to the cloud. And according to Microsoft, these are the most powerful computers ever built. During their keynote presentation today, they kept on comparing it to the M3 series of Macs and pretty much every test they showed off, the speed and performance outperformed the MacBooks with the M3s in them. They've also really simplified the Copilot experience. So if you used Microsoft Copilot already, you've probably done it right on the Microsoft Copilot website, or maybe you've even tried the Windows little sidebar thing where you can chat directly inside of Windows. Well, the new app is going to be a sort of snappable app where it doesn't have to be just in that sidebar. You can move it anywhere on your screen. And I'm actually here with Pete Huang from The Neuron, and he made a really good point to me. He said, it's interesting that ChatGPT they made their new app Mac only, but didn't release a Windows version yet. Well, it turns out the most likely reason they didn't release a Windows version yet is because, well, Microsoft is just building it into Windows. You're probably not gonna actually need the ChatGPT app on Windows if Copilot just does it natively built into Windows. They actually showed off a few demos of this Copilot being used on Windows. And just like they showed off in that ChatGPT demo the other day where you can have voice conversations with it, you just speak in real time, and then it responds to you in real time, that was ChatGPT. Well, Copilot can do the same thing but of course it's built into Windows. One of the demos they showed off was somebody actually playing Minecraft for the very first time. They didn't actually know what they were doing in Minecraft. So they jumped into Minecraft, turned on Copilot, and then were asking Copilot what they should do next. And Copilot was watching what was going on in the screen, seeing what was happening inside of Minecraft and making suggestions for what the player should do next in Minecraft. They also very briefly showed off a demo where somebody was editing some photos inside of Windows and they were able to use this Copilot tool to help them dial in the photo perfectly. So Windows was essentially making recommendations on how to improve their photo. Recently, Sam Altman was on an interview and during this interview, he said one of his favorite uses of the new version of GPT, the GPT 4.0, was just having his phone sitting next to his computer and as he was getting work done on his computer, just kind of chatting with his phone, solving problems, asking questions. It was just sort of like a, a sidekick sitting next to him all day that he can ask questions to. Well, that's what it sounds like Copilot is designed for. They also also introduced a new feature that they're going to be rolling out called Recall. And on Windows 11 PCs, this recall feature is going to remember everything you did on the computer. All of the websites you browsed, all of the stuff you did in site of various Microsoft apps, pretty much anything you've done on your PC at all, this tool remembers it, and then it'll have a search function where you can go and search for anything you've looked at on the internet recently, anything you've worked on. This is essentially like having a photographic memory with your computer. Anything you've done recently, you can quickly recall it and find it again. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the recall feature. We can actually go all the way to today. You can see an image I was messing with in Microsoft Paint using the new co-creator feature. And I can actually slide this and you can actually see the actual iterations of my recording here or of my image here. I can slide this around and you can see each step I did when making this image. It's pretty crazy. And then I can go back to yesterday. I can see you know, who was actually working on this computer. 
Going back to May 9th, we can see this turtle that they generated using co-creator. Pretty cool image, but when I go all the way back, you can see what this image started as. And then let's say there's something that's in the memory that you don't want in the memory, like my silly little robot on the moon drawing here. I don't want this in the memory. I can just click this little delete button here, delete snapshot. This snapshot will be permanently deleted from your PC and can't be undone. I can delete this and now it is no longer gonna be in my memory. All right, let's close out of recall and let's take a peek inside of the new co-pilot here. I was actually looking up just now how to actually record my screen here so I could show this off. But if I come into notebook, I can actually get a little bit of a demo of what it will be like to actually chat with the computer. I can just hit this microphone here. What is the most popular game on the planet? You click the submit button, it'll work. The title of the most popular game on the planet can vary depending on the metrics used, such as peak concurrent players, average monthly players, or total sales. All right, I went ahead and stopped it because it will just keep on talking here. But I also wanted to show off, this is what the new Copilot looks like. It is an app that you can actually move around and drag around. I can snap it to the sidebar over here and uh, you know, use my paint tool on the left side. I can set up this however I want. So if we're wondering why ChatGPT did not release a desktop app for ChatGPT on Windows, but they did on Mac, it's probably because this tool here can basically just do that. Now, some of these features I posted on X about to say this is something really cool that I'm seeing at the demo. And pretty much all of the comments were like, oh my gosh, what about privacy? Do we really want Windows collecting everything we've ever done? Well, a couple things. A, you can turn these features off. There's gonna be a new Copilot area inside of your settings where you can decide how much of Copilot you want working inside of Windows 11. B, they said that they will never ever train on any of your data, so any of the stuff you're using with Copilot, any of the stuff that it's remembering, is not getting sent anywhere for training. C, they have the ability to unremember anything. So if there's, let's say, some sites that maybe you don't want saved into the memory for whatever reason, you can actually go into the memory, see what it remembers, and actually ask it to delete some of the stuff so it's not saved into the memory, so maybe somebody else coming and using the computer later won't be able to go and look at all of the memory of what you've done earlier for whatever reason you may not want people to know about it. And D, the fourth thing that I wanna say about the privacy sort of security concerns is because these new computers are running everything on device. Theoretically, you should not need to be connected to the internet to run these apps. So you can run Copilot and have it remember everything and have conversations with it and not even be connected to the internet because these new computers have that MPU, the neural processing unit in it, meaning once again, it's not gonna need to actually connect to a cloud to be able to use it. Personally, I think this is the future of AI. I think this is where it kinda needs to go. I think we need a lot of this AI actually running on device instead of needing to use the cloud because a lot of people are gonna want to use a lot of these AI features even when they don't have access to the internet. Also, due to all the privacy concerns that people are pointing out, you know, a lot of people aren't going to want to have to send the information to the cloud and wait for it to come back because who knows what they're storing and keeping on us when we use some of these cloud services. They also showed off their new Surface PCs. I'm not gonna get too deep into this because I know there's a ton of tech review channels that are probably showing off these new PCs, but they have some pretty cool features in them, including a new feature where you can just jump into Microsoft Paint, start to draw something, and then it will use AI to sort of make a better version of it. So you can draw sort of like scribbles and uh, rough outlines of what you're looking for, and in real time, it will actually recreate that image, but in like a style that you choose. So if you want it in pixel art or watercolor or realistic, you can choose these various styles, draw your little hand-drawn sketch and watch as it creates something that looks really impressive. During today's pre-build keynote, they also showed off some other really cool features. They showed off using Adobe Photoshop side by side with a Mac M3 and their new Surface laptops. And of course their new Surface laptops with the neural processing unit in them was so much faster. They also talked about how they're working really closely with Blackmagic Design who makes DaVinci Resolve, the tool that I actually edit my videos with. They showed using some of the AI features in DaVinci Resolve, things like the AI rotoscoping tools, and it was really, really, really quick because it's able to use the 
NPU instead of the GPU to process this stuff. And finally, the last thing that they kind of showed off that I thought was really, really impressive was real-time transcription and translation. They showed people having conversations over a tool like Microsoft Teams or Zoom or Google Meet or whatever tool you want to use, and whatever audio is coming through your computer, it can actually transcribe it in real time as the audio is coming across, but not only transcribe, it can also translate it. So you could be talking with somebody in a completely different language across Microsoft Teams or on Zoom or one of these platforms, and while they're speaking in, let's say, Japanese, you're gonna get subtitles below that are automatically translating it in real time to English and vice versa. So it really kind of kills that language barrier where you can start to have conversations with anybody in any language and it will transcribe it for you right on the screen as you're talking to them. That to me was really, really impressive. So yeah, I thought a lot of the tech they showed off today was really, really cool. I mean, I'm an AI enthusiast. I'm very, very biased. I'm in my own sort of tech bubble where I just love this stuff. So I'm very, very easily impressed. I love the idea of being able to just sit at my computer and have conversations with it. Even when I'm playing video games, almost like a sidekick playing the video game with me, or let's say I'm trying to code up something and it's watching my screen the whole time and I'm typing the code and then I try to run the code in my browser or something and it doesn't work. Well, I can go, hey, what is wrong? Why is this code not working? And because it can see my code, it can just speak out to me, here's what the issue is, here's why the code isn't working. I really, really love that idea, you know, assuming they're not training on the data and it's there's no privacy concerns. What I'm saying isn't getting sent to Microsoft. And from the sounds of it, the way they described it, none of this information is getting passed along to Microsoft. Because these computers are AI first, all of this happens on the computer. You can just do it right there. It's not connecting to the internet. It's not passing the data on to Microsoft. I also really, really love the recall feature. I think that's gonna be really handy. I know that was the one thing that when I made a post about it on X, everybody was freaking out about going, I do not want this thing where it remembers everything on my computer because of the obvious potential privacy concerns and what you're looking at on your computer, maybe getting sent to Microsoft, but that is not what they're doing. They were very, very adamant about the fact that they don't train on it. It happens locally on your computer. You can delete whatever memory you don't want to be remembered in there. And so I think a lot of the concerns that people are worried about shouldn't really be concerns, at least not yet, because they are trying to design this so you shouldn't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not personally a Google fanboy or a Microsoft fanboy or an Apple fanboy. I'm just a tech fanboy. I love all of this stuff. I love tech, I love AI, so I'm impressed by the tech. I do know and understand the concerns people might have with some of this tech, with it remembering everything and having these conversations like Siri or Alexa, but directly on your computer and a lot smarter. And I personally do have some of those concerns as well, but it does truly feel talking to a lot of the people here at Microsoft that their intention is truly to make it so those aren't actual concerns. That's why they built all of it straight into the computer so that you can use it offline. It's processing the AI with that NPU and you can even play games because the games will leverage the GPU while your conversation with the AI will leverage the NPU. So pretty cool tech. And this is just day one of build. The actual main build keynote is still tomorrow. So there's still a slew of announcements that Microsoft is going to make that we haven't even seen yet. I'm here for it, I'm excited about it. Can't wait to show them off to you. And if you wanna make sure you stay in the loop with the latest AI news, you get all the latest updates from events like this Microsoft event and last week's Google event and the Cisco event coming up and the Qualcomm event coming up after that and the Apple event coming up after that, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because I will keep you looped in on all of the coolest stuff that's happening in the AI world right now. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed and if you like this video, you learned something from it, you found something valuable about it, give it a thumbs up. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.